Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to another episode of Row Roots. I think we're on episode 10, I think now. The last one was 9. Uh, in 9, we rebuilt all the track around here and over here, put a loop in, etc. And I've gone through and updated all the routing, uh, as I said I would. You, you know how it works now. I've kind of shown you how the routing works. It's just a, a process. Uh, obviously, things like this root sensor here will have to be updated if and when we go through Newton. They'll have to be uh, changed. But for now, it is fine. Uh, I did notice as well that tracks one and two in Cumbernauk can no longer get south down here. Um, <laughs> you know, they used to be able to just nip through there, but this junction has kind of blocked things off a little bit. So I don't know we, what sacrifice we have to make here. We may just have to knock Easter House on the head in terms of its routing options. If we get rid of this southbound bit, we could perhaps allow Cumbernauk to come through here. Um, or maybe when they bring out the update that allows the signal to go on that, that corner there, we can at least pull this back and it will give us some room. I don't know. This may get reworked slightly. This episode, I want to look at the contract situation. As we know, if we click on contracts and go to active contracts uh, and sort by reward, we can see all of these contracts here uh, that are low paying and going to Cumbernaut, Bridgeton, Bridgeton, Cumbernaut, like they're literally doing this. And that doesn't pay well anymore. So it pays to review them. Now, in order to do this, uh, it's pretty straightforward to cancel the contracts. But then the question becomes, well, you know, what do we replace them with? We already know that contracts are always appearing in here. We've already reached the limit um, of the current contracts. And it's a little bit tedious to sort of sit there and go through them all one at a time and decline them. They sort of tend to come thick and fast. Um, you know, what can we do? Well, there are things we can actually do. Let me just slow the game down a second. Uh, I did put it on 25 speed and let it play out to make sure nothing was getting stuck. Um, when you've done any major reworking like that, I recommend that you say, do a save and then run your network at 25 speed for at least an hour. That's the, when you hear the gong, that's the start of another hour. Um, run it for an hour and, you know, pay attention to any trains getting stuck. I think I had one that was uh, had a slight issue down here somewhere, I think it was, uh, that I had to fix. And the inbound train from Ashfield that terminates in Glasgow, I had to terminate it on platform four. It was set for five, and four is the only one that goes into the coachyard. So there's little things that, you know, a little bit of polish that you might have to fix when you've done a major rework. Anyway, there are things that we can take that will help us with the contract situation. Uh, and they're, they're under here, under the contract section. These three are the ones that you want to look at. Um, effectively, these are things that will help you to automatically dismiss contracts that you're not interested in. Think of it that way. So the first one is what you call a structural manager contract. This will help to remove any contracts based on the type of, of train. So whether it's a freight train or intercity and urban, etc., you can say, I don't want any freight trains or I don't want any intercity, and it will just automatically dismiss them. The financial one is a filter based on the amount of money that's being paid. So it will filter things out that are below a certain level that you set. And then finally, the regional one is to do with the destination or at least the stops that it's making. So with this, you can say, you know, I don't want any contracts that don't have Glasgow Central in them, and it will automatically filter them. They're, they're obviously useful now because we're getting a lot of contracts coming through and we can't pay attention to everything. It's just tedious. So let's get this. I'm not bothered about the finance one initially. I'm more interested in this one, which we'll grab, and this one. But to get this one, I'll need to convert some stuff. Uh, so we'll go back over here and convert 15... We need to get up to 10 red. Like that. There we go. So now we can go structural contracts and we can upgrade that. So that's those two. Uh, we're now out of red. Now this one here, the urban transit contract, is something that we'll probably do much later on. Um, this, is to, this is a great way of picking up red, but as you can see here, it's a contract type that generates trains that if you get fewer than six stations in the schedule, they'll give you a green. But if you get six or more, they'll pay a red. So when you've got enough stations on your map, um, you can basically start to farm red with these things. So we'll, we'll, we'll get that later. And of course, this one here, which is mentioned before, 
uh, is you know, don't get that until you know what you're doing because it is a, you can get yourself in trouble with that one. Let me put it that way. Uh, and then there's other stuff we can get. Unlimited stations. We'll have to get this at some point. We're going to come up against the limit of 12. And then higher speed tracks. Well, higher speed tracks demands a lot more money. So we've got some ways to go uh, before we do that. So let's set about filtering the contracts that we want. Right, so if we click on contracts now, we've got this little cog up here, which allows us to uh, filter things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete most of these here. But we'll just get rid of all of them. So what we'll do, we'll pause it so we don't get any more contracts and we keep things under control. We'll go to our actual contracts and, you know, having sorted by the income, we can look at these and see, look at this one here. We had five trains on the contract. We've done 62. That's how long that's been running. So this is Bridgeton to Cumbernaut to Bridgeton. We're just going to get rid of these. They won't take any penalty for them. Uh, but we're going to terminate all of these contracts so that we free up some space. Obviously, we're going to take a drop in income. Uh, now then, have we got any more Bridgeton, Cumbernaut, Bridgeton? There's another one down here. So we'll just get rid of... But that's paying 5000 That's That's a lot of money considering the distance it goes. So that one... I'm probably going to keep Bridgeton, Cumbernaut, Bridgeton, 3,200. It's not not bad, but it's not amazing either. Uh, 2,203, that's 2,020. We, we could perhaps leave those two in for now. Then we go to contracts, and we'll click on the cog here. And this is where, depending on what we've unlocked, this, you know, we can filter. We haven't got a financial unlocked. So what we might want to say is, you know what, we're looking for contracts that kind of come in to Bridgeton or start in Bridgeton, etc. So we'll say that our mandatory station is Bridgeton. Um, it mu so it will reject anything that doesn't have Bridgeton in it. And then we can say, what kind of contracts are we looking for? Well, under one-time contracts, um, we probably don't want to... I don't want to have freight trains. I don't want to deal with freight trains anymore initially. Uh, and I don't want to have any one-time intercities because that would require us to have a coach yard uh, somewhere on the map. So it might come in from Bridgeton. The only coach yards we have, we don't have any over here. So the only coach yard we have is, is Glasgow. So I don't want anything going here. So for now, we can say, well, intercity and commuter. Don't mind those two, uh, as long as they involve Bridgeton. And then we'll just let it run. And uh, we'll basically kick back and, and see what happens. We'll speed it up. And every now and again, we can check in here and we'll see what kind of contract comes in. Well, it took some time. Uh, it took a little while before we started to get contracts through, and then quite a few of them were coming in with just absolute rubbish. Uh, for example, Bridgeton to Glasgow paying a thousand uh, credits, like no way. Um, but we're starting to see some stuff. Bridgeton to Glasgow, 3K, you know, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not really what we're looking for. Bridgeton to Glasgow, back to Bridgeton. I mean, this terminates here. This is a higher speed and wants to go back. So I would decline that because that's better than that one anyway. Um, but the numbers aren't fantastic. Then we start to get slightly more interesting ones, like this one here. Bridgeton, Springburn to Bridgeton. So that's Bridgeton from here. Springburn is there. Now, we we kept Platform 2. So, you know, we have a clear path there and back. 6K, not bad. We could definitely run that. The only thing to watch for is the timing of it coming through this area here. Try not to make it clash with this stuff. That's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, but it is definitely an option. Then we've got here where it says build a coach yard at the destination well at Queen Street that's just never going to happen so we'll get rid of those um, so this one is the one that I think we'll, we'll take here because it's quite well quite well paid um, so yeah timing it is going to be a problem we've got pretty much nothing coming in at Bridgeton now if you have a look at our full hours run uh, we can start it on platform 2 say there's nothing around uh, we could even put it on 1 it doesn't really matter so we'll accept that and let's drop it onto 1 and uh, we'll start. It's been a while since we've done a, a manual routing, isn't it? So we'll see. I mean, this thing is scheduled to go to Springburn. So this routing here uh, should, in theory, route it directly that way because there's a table entry for Springburn. That will take us through here. Uh, this one, the arrival sensor will probably... Actually, I don't even know what the arrival sensor is going to do. It probably... I'm guessing won't do anything by default. It'll leave as it is, maybe. I'm not really sure. Then it'll get through here, and it'll hit the routing sensor for other. So it'll come this way. 
And then this is where we'll have to sort of manually deal with it because at the moment this is on an infinite to that and for some reason that's been permanently set that shouldn't be permanently set so this should say default platform platform 2 the arrival sensor that one uh others goes to spring burn so it's default and it's a spring burn which is not really what we want this is the problem this isn't going to realistically work for us i don't think if we tend to if we send this train to platform 2 it won't auto route properly uh, because this is set to other. This is going to queue something automatically. Um, hmm, this could be an issue actually. Maybe what we do is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. This is a tricky one. Um, we could allow it to come into platform one, but then it would just hog the platform for a bit and wouldn't be able to depart that way because it doesn't have an auto a departure sensor or a signal. So this could be a tricky contract, actually. I think don't think we can automate this one, looking at it. All right, so here's what I've done. I've got the routing table and I've got rid of the default, which is what I said in a previous video. Uh, I've said anything going to Queen Street, go through platform one. Ashfield, which is here. Ashfield, go through platform one. So the only two kind of destinations the router deals with, everything else, it won't touch it. That then means anything that's going to Springburn will be left for the routing, the arrival sensor, which will bring them into Springburn and will default to platform two because this is the only platform we want to use for actual arrivals into Springburn. Anything else will just pass through Springburn. Uh, let's just make sure this is doing okay. I want to see what happens when it gets to this sensor here. I don't think it's going to set it automatically. Yeah, it's not, so I'm going to have to set that. We may need a root sensor back here that, that governs that. I think that's the only way this train will actually route through there. I think I just found a hole in the plan. I think what we need is a routing sensor here. Um, actually, you might even need one here, bizarrely enough. Because anything coming through here won't be able to route through properly. So I think what we want to do is say... Hang on. You carry on. No. Wait, you meant to be stopping here? No. Carry on, mate. Oh, it's stopping there anyway. Bridgestone to... Why is it stopping at Cumbernaut? Hmm. Um, so this can control... Yeah, this is the one I want. So it should be controlling that signal, not the one I just selected accidentally. Uh, so what we want to say is this routing sensor, uh, if it's for Cumbernal, don't do anything at all. If you're going to steps, then go through... Actually, you can, you can actually technically route it through a different platform. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because if you're not stopping at Cumbernal then why not go via one of the other platforms and make it a through train? Interesting. Or if you're going to Springburn, go via 2. If you're going via to Queen Street, go via 2. If you're going to Ashfield, go via 2. And that basically says anything that's not going to Cumbernal, just go straight through. And then afterwards this arrival sensor will deal with giving you into Cumbernaut and then what you could do is you could put another one just here and then copy the configuration from this and paste it there and then everything coming through the tunnel or through here will automatically route through platform two if it's uh, a through train otherwise the arrival sensor will deal with it cool um let's get rid of that i think i accidentally queued that so we'll get rid of that Now this won't have, this has got a spring burn any set to it. So in theory, this arrival sensor in theory should route it straight into platform two, which is the default, but I don't think it will. Yes, it did. Okay, so it defaulted it, so that's fine. So coming back now, what's this set to? This is set to auto block there. Coming back, this should mostly work. The only time I can think it will not work 
is this arrival sensor won't know how to set it through here. I think what's going to happen... Yeah, I think that's uh, going to be the case. Now, the only way to, to put a routing sensor here is to move that forward one, which then means sacrificing platform one uh, as an inbound uh, from the west. Because we can't, you know, we can't make that cut. And also, actually, I don't think we can get into two either. So, you know, we used to use one and two for freight. We may have to sacrifice that option and just allow it to carry on instead, which would mean effectively doing that. And then I'll just pause it a second. We'll need to take this signal here. Um, actually to cancel that for a second we'll get rid of this we'll put the actual signal far down as we can then what we'll do is we'll put the arrival sensor just in front of it actually well, no we'll put it there we'll then copy the configuration from that arrival sensor and paste it into there and that will allow us to get rid of that arrival sensor and then we'll put a root sensor back here so you're controlling that signal, right? So this thing is controlling this signal. And basically, this is going to arrive into platform three and four into if it's stopping in Cumbernaut. Otherwise, what this thing will do, it will say, well, if you're going to Easter House, go straight through four. If you go into Cumbernaut, go straight through four. If you go into Glasgow, just go straight through four, um, etc doubt you'll be going to Queen Street you could be but it's unlikely you could add it but currently it won't know how to get through okay so let's see what happens so the routing sensor should kick off because it'll know it wants to go to Bridgeton so that will and the arrival sensor won't do anything because it's not stopping in Cumbernaut or it shouldn't be And I forgot to take that to green automatically. So I think we just slowed the train down substantially. Uh, now the route sensor is set up for Bridgeton that way, everything else that way. So it looks like it's done a stop. I am presume because it's a commuter train, it's done a stop. I don't think this contract's going to pay particularly well. I'll bring you into three. Because I think, you know, because it's a new network and there's some niggles to be ironed out, I think this is going to... It's 85%, actually. That's not bad. That's not bad considering the issues we had. I was thinking that would be a lot lower. But, yeah, I mean, 5,200, we can't really sniff at that. It's done an average of 52. Uh, it got stuck in a couple of places. Otherwise, I think we could have probably got 6K out of that. But that's one contract that's been upgraded. 1,000, no way. Um... You know what? I might get the. Um, I might convert some stuff. And get the um, financial manager contract. We'll take that. And then that will allow us under here to say minimum reward. We can say something like 5,000. So don't even show me anything. That's not five grand. I don't get out of bed for less than five grand. So don't even bother. And then we'll see what we can do. Steps Cumbernaut to Bridgeton. That's heck of a run for three grand, isn't it? Bridgeton to Glasgow, three. I mean, that one is so easy that it's arguably worth taking anyway. If Bridgeton and then terminates in Glasgow, it's such a piece of cake to deal with. Right, so while I've been waiting for some new contracts to come through, I've spent quite a bit of money uh, just upgrading some track around the place. The Cumbernaut's mostly done now. Uh, and the feeding tracks to Bridgeton. Glasgow still needs doing. Um, yeah, just to kind of, you know, trying to get it all up to up to speed is the goal. But we're going to have to do it piecemeal. Uh, in terms of contracts coming in, I had this one come in, which I thought I'd leave because it is a bit of a gotcha, this one. 
This is a commuter train from Glasgow to Bridgeton. Notice a little coachyard symbol, very, very subtle there. Uh, we can't do this. Don't be tempted to even try because you've not got anything putting trains in there that you can pull from. So we're going to have to decline that. This one's an interesting one, though, an intercity train that goes Bridgeton to Queen Street to Steps. So Bridgeton would start over here. And then it would have to go across through Glasgow into Queen Street and then up to Steps, which is definitely interesting because at times we do have both platform two and three at queen street occupied so we have to be careful with the timing because queen street is quite busy uh, on platform three but not so busy on platform two uh, however that you can see the gap there but if you bring it in at the wrong time we'll really get stuck with this so now while this one's leaving going to bridgeton platform three now's probably a good time to sort of drop it in the mix uh, this one's heading out to ashfield so we kind of want this one to... It's actually sat there for three minutes. So this this could get in the way. So let's fast forward time a little bit. It is really... It becomes really difficult to try and work out when to put trains through uh, at this stage because there's so many moving parts. Um, and in terms of start time, well, platform one's about to be occupied. This train will be passing Bridgeton. So it will come through the moment we do this. Uh, that train will head to Queen Street Platform 3, which is not a platform we want to use. And we've still got good availability on Platform 2. So I think just as soon as this one's ready, now would seem like a decent time, and then we'll have to handhold it through. So we'll kick it off onto Platform 2, and then we'll see what happens. So it should get sent to here. Next stop is Queen Street Any. So Queen Street would default to here. It will then hit that router, which will say, where are you going? And by default, it will send it through there. And that's where it becomes a bit unstuck, I think, because when it gets sent, this thing can send it to that stop, but this won't know what to do with it because that's an arrival sensor. We don't have enough space for a router here, which is somewhat frustrating, to be honest with you. Um, because trains coming through here that are not arrived from Glasgow, we can't send them on the way. Um, it's just, it's really annoying, to be fair. Queen Street. Yeah, we're going to have to basically manually switch that through. Um, I don't know if this is going to work in automatic mode, because we can't put a sensor here. I kind of want to be able to put a combo um, arrival routing sensor there. So if it's for Glasgow, arrive it. Otherwise, you know, route it this way. But because of the constraints of the map, we can't put another... We need another block there, really. We'd have to move everything over, which means getting rid of all this. So we'll just let it through. It will then route itself down here. That should, by default, send it through to there. This will send it into here. Then we've got a routing sensor here. It says if you go into Queen Street, go that way. And then this won't know what to do with it specifically because it's not got a set platform yet. So the best thing we can do now is say, right, go there and this will deal with it next time. But yeah, I think this is going to be an issue back here. I don't think it's ever going to be able to get... It, it will keep getting stuck if that point isn't set. Right, you're going to come back to steps now. So in terms of steps, it should be automatically set to come this way. That will send it through there. Does that have a default platform? Yes, it does. What does steps platform 2 look like? We may have to send it into a different platform. Depends how long that stays there. Actually, should be okay. It all cleared by then. Although this... This guy's come through at the most inopportune moment. Okay, he's through. I think the track speed is really helping, though. Okay, that should send him to platform two by default. I've just noticed, though, he's reversing the whole thing. I wonder why he's going so slow. So, I just made a classic error, didn't I? So, I brought him into Bridge from Bridgeton. He was an intercity train, which means he's headed at the front got to Queen Street and then I basically reversed him all the way to steps 
So this contract is never going to work, but definitely serves to illustrate a point. However, bizarrely enough, even with this train reversing, he still maintained an average speed and got 8,700, but I am going to decline it because I don't think that's uh, a contract that's going to work for us. But yeah. So I think we're going to have to leave it there. We've got plenty of good track going on here. We're now in search for uh, new, more lucrative contracts. We have a lot of availability over at Bridgeton. I think what I'll do next time is I'll start fleshing out Glasgow Central. I think we'll start to put this coach yard to good use. So I'll switch the filter because uh, this Bridgeton thing's not really working. Uh, I'll switch the filter and we'll start looking for coach contracts into Glasgow, try and build up our money and our red tokens and then try and get out to uh, Wifflet. I think Wifflet's going to be the main goal for this little playthrough. But we'll see how we go. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me, your, give me your comments and I'll read them. And other, other than that, I shall see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Happy training.